Hey guys, it's Mr. G, and in this video, I'm going to take what I created on the left and basically turn it into snap code. I've gone ahead and kind of cleaned up what I wrote on the left because I was just writing it down as I was going through it, and I've kind of cleaned it up and put it on the right side and typed it up a little bit with some colors. So we can see that we're creating a reporter block that we're going to call position of num in sorted list num list. So this reporter block will have two inputs. The first one is going to be num and the second is going to be num list. Num is what we're looking for within our num list. And keep in mind that the num list must be sorted. If it's not sorted, then this algorithm will not work. First, we're going to create three variables named upper, lower, and mid. Then we're going to initialize upper to the length of the num list, initialize lower to one, and then we're going to keep checking the middle until we find something. If we do find that the middle equals the number we're looking for, we're going to report that value because that is what we're looking for, the position that we're looking for that contains the num that we are looking for. If we get down to two possible positions, the last two positions, in the case, in the event that we do have just two places left, we're going to check the lower one and see if that equals the number. Then we'll check the upper and see if that equals the number. All right? If at any point we report the value or the position that we have found the number to be at, then everything below that point doesn't run. A couple of videos ago, I explained how report blocks can get us out of these loops, out of the repeat until, or get us out of the for block or the for each block. If we get to number six, step six, and the reporter block hasn't been triggered or the report hasn't been triggered by this point, that means the number is not in the list. So we could just report back to the user, the number is not in the list. So I've gone ahead and shrunken down the instructions and shifted it over to the right a little bit, and I'm gonna be coding on the left in snap. The first thing I wanna do is create a reporter block called position of num in sorted list num list. And so this block is gonna have two parameters, num and num list. So let's do that. Let's right click, create a block. It's going to be a list reporter block. So I'm going to type position of percent num. So that creates my first parameter in sorted list and then percent num list. And that's going to be my second parameter. And then I could just go ahead and choose the types of these, these parameters. So num is going to be a number. It's going to be expecting a number. And num list is going to be expecting a list. Next, I want to create the three variables named upper, lower, and mid. So I'm actually going to use script variables for this job. And I'm going to name it upper, lower, and mid. Now the reason I'm using script variables is because these variables are going to change every single time we get a new num list or every single time we get a new num. So there's really no point in keeping it as a global variable so that every block can access it because only this block will have to. Now that I've created my variables, I'm going to actually initialize them. I'm only going to initialize upper and lower and I'll initialize mid later on. So in order to initialize it, I'm going to use the set block. And I'm going to set upper to the length of num list. So I have to make sure I use the correct blocks. And I'm going to set lower equal to one because that's my lowest position. Next, I'm going to create my repeat until block. And I'm going to repeat the following until upper minus lower equals one. So in order to do that, I need my operators. I need to do upper minus the lower. And I have to check to see if that equals one. So I have to bring these over and check to see if it equals one. Now within this block is where I'm gonna set my mid or my midpoint or my median to the formula that I created before. The one where I round down, so that's why I'm gonna use the floor block. So I'm going to set mid equal to the floor. So bear with me because this is going to be a little bit crazy. So I'm going to bring over the square root block because the square root block allows me to choose all of these different functions. But I just need floor. So I'm going to do the floor of the upper 
minus the lower divided by 2. And then, once I've gotten these values, I have to add the lower to this. So I'm going to bring over another green operator block, and I'm going to add the lower to this value. So if you guys remember from the previous video, I created this formula that will help me figure out the median or the midpoint every single time I have a list. So I'm going to go ahead and set mid to this value, and that should give me the midpoint. Now I should be able to start checking to see if the midpoint equals what I'm looking for. So let me use an if block, and I'm going to check to see if the item at the middle of my list equals the number I'm looking for. So I'm going to use my operator and check to see if the item of or the item at the middle of my entire list equals the num that I'm looking for, then I'm going to report found, or I'm going to report actually the position. So it's going to report back the mid, the position of mid. So I'm actually going to use that. I can actually start testing my block right now. I could create a really tiny list, let's say a list with three items, because my formula will work for three items. Actually, it'll work for anything, but I don't really have the code to check to see if once we're down to two items, if one or the other is what we're looking for. So I'm just going to create this quick little list with four, six, eight inside of it. I'm going to be looking for six in this list. And right now it should report back two. And it does. So if I try to determine the positions of four or eight, it's actually going to get stuck in an infinite loop because it doesn't know what to do. It's not able to eliminate anything because I haven't changed the upper bound or the lower bound. So it's just going to be stuck checking the middle point forever. So that's not what we want. So we can't really test that out yet. All right, so we're checking to see if the number at the middle or the median is the number that I'm looking for. But what should I do if it's not? So I'm actually going to relabel this, which someone on YouTube taught me how to do. I'm actually going to change that if block to an if else block. So if the number is not in the middle of the list, here's where we have to reset our upper bound or our lower bounds. Uh, let's do the upper bound first. So now I'm going to check to see if the number at the midpoint is greater or less than the number that I'm looking for. So if it's greater, if the mid or the number at the middle is greater than the number I'm looking for, we have to reset the upper. And we're going to reset the upper to be mid minus 1. So if the number at the midpoint is greater than the number we're looking for. I also got to realize that if it's not greater, and it's not equal to, it must be less than. So I could actually relabel this if to an if else as well. If it's not greater than it, than the number we're looking for, then it must be smaller because we already checked to see if it was equal to the number we were looking for. So all we got to do is set the lower equal to mid plus one. Our block is really starting to come together, and now the block is actually changing the upper and the lower values, and it keeps doing this until we get down to two values. Now, if at any point we find the number that we're looking for equal to the mid that we're looking at, then we report out of here and we're done. Lastly, once we've gotten down to two values, we're going to break out of this repeat until block. And so now I have to check to see if the number at the lower bound or the number that it's lower is equal to the number I'm looking for. And if it's not, then I have to check to see if the number at the upper equals the number I'm looking for. And if it's not, this final report will get caught. So I'm going to actually move my block up here for just a sec, and I'm going to code that up. So just before the final report, 
I'm going to check to see if the number at lower equals the number I'm looking for. And if it just so happens that that number or that value is what I'm looking for, then I can report lower because that's going to be the position of that value. Otherwise, if, let's use another if here, if the item, I'm going to duplicate a little bit to save some time, but if the item at upper equals the number that we're looking for, then I'm going to report upper because upper is going to represent the position of the value that we're looking for. And if none of these are true, if if doesn't get caught or else if doesn't get caught, then the final report will get hit and the number is not in the list. So I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to test out my block with eight values. When I look for the value of four or when I look for the number four, I should report back one. And it just so happens that it is one, position one. Let's try six. So it should report back two. And it does. Let's try eight. And it should report back three. And it does. Let's try position 12. Four. Perfect. Position 34 should report back five. And it does. 83 should report back six. 124 should report back seven. And 244 should report back eight, and it does. So it looks like our code is actually working. I'm just gonna try one more thing. I'm just gonna add one more number. Let's just do one bigger number so that we have an odd number, right? Two, four, six, eight, nine. So now we have nine values, and if I hit 244, it should report back eight. Great, and if I do 632, it should report back nine, and it does. Let's just try 34 again, so it should report back five. And let me try a number that's not in here, 37. Uh-oh, we're stuck in an endless loop. So that means that it's not hitting my final report. So there's some issue here. Let's see, how are we gonna debug this? It's possible that because I have an odd number of values here, and this repeat until never gets down to two blocks, that I'm not actually catching 37. So let me decrease I had nine, let me decrease it back down to three. And let's see if we catch this. When we shorten our list to three values, 37 never reports that it's not in the list. And it should report that it's not in the list really quickly. So it looks like I found a bug within our code where if I look for a number or a value that's not in our list and the list happens to be odd, it never actually hits one of the reports and it actually gets stuck inside of the repeat until. So when I have a three item list, the first thing that I do is I check the middle value. So six is not equal to 37. So what happens then is that I go into this else. And if the item I'm looking at, or the, sorry, if the midpoint, the value at the midpoint is greater than the num, so is six greater than 37? No, so I go into the else. So over here in this else, what I do is I set the lower equal to mid plus one. And mid was just equal to two, position two. So what's happening is that my lower is now being set equal to my upper. And when that happens, I don't break out of this loop. I just keep going and it never finds anything. So what I have to do is I have to check to see if upper minus lower equals one or if it equals zero. So by checking to see if upper minus lower equals one or zero, and zero in the case that it equals the same value, they equal the same number, I'm able to break out of this loop. And then I could check to see what the value is at lower or upper or report that the number isn't in the list. So if I hit apply and I run this, 
it tells me that the number is not on the list. I hope that was pretty helpful. I know it's kind of crazy looking and I know that I didn't even catch this bug when I created it yesterday until just now when I was testing in the video. But this just goes to show you guys how important testing is in the real world. So I'm going to go with this and I'm going to call it a day.